Tower. Code of 425 10th Avenue. The maniac killer has been cornered. Yeah, okay. You got everything? Yeah. Well, every cop in the city is hunting for this bird. I'm looking him right in the eye. And what an eye. Headquarters calling all cars in District 7. Yeah, if that camera ever gets here, we'll get the story in the next edition. I can hear the cops coming now. Captured. Yeah, it looks like the opposition beat us to it. Where's Andy Bryant? I don't know. Where's Andy Bryant? He's been on this assignment for a week. Where now is he? If you're looking for Andy, you better call out your bloodhound. Why? Last time I saw him, he was breezing out of his speakeasy. Blasted again? Loaded to the gills, and he was singing, California, here I come. <laughs> this is the finish. Rain for Salt Lake, Denver, Kansas City, Chicago, and all points east. Hey, wake up. Huh? Where am I? Well, where do you think you are? I'll bite. Where? Where were you the last time you remember anything? What? <laughs> I was coming out of a speakeasy singing, California, here I come. <laughs> well, you made it all right. You kidding me? Listen, how far am I from Broadway? About $117. Yeah, looks like you got a tourist, mister. Where's the nearest hotel? Hit the pavement and turn to the right. Turn to the right. Yeah. Yes, I put in a long-distance call for New York. Yes, sweetheart, I'll hold the line. Hello. Hello, New York tabloids? Yeah, give me the city desk. Yes, the city editor. Hello, is this you, Maxie? Yes, this is Max. Talk fast. Good old Maxie. It's great to hear your voice again. This is your old pal, Andy Bryant. Oh, Merry Christmas. Hey, what do you mean by getting plastered and walking out on me? Say, don't shout like that, Maxie. I feel punk. You mean drunk. I'm a sick man. You lay down on your paper like a dog. 
You let the best story of the year get away from us. I'll never do it again. Honest, Maxie. Send me car fare so I can get back on the job. Not a plugged nickel. And as far as the job is concerned, you're through. Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell you something. I'm the best man you ever had in the tabloid, drunk or sober. You can't tell me where to head in. I can get another job. I... $6.40. Come in. Keep the change. Thanks. Say, uh, what are the newspapers in this town? The Dispatch and the Herald, sir. The Dispatch is just a little paper. And the Herald's a big one, huh? Yes, sir. I see. <laughs> Why don't you give my boy a break in the Herald? What, that Palooka? He was not cold last night. Tell him what I did to Dempsey. Dempsey? What Dempsey? Well, not Jack. But I still claim he lost in the foul. Foul? Since when they moved that belt line up to the chin. Say, listen, you don't understand. I'm off. He's going to have a very, very good one. Bobby? 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 Here's something for your letters to the Lovelorn column. Dear Aunt Dolly, I am a rich widow of 50 with six children. I intend marrying a man of 60 with eight children. Do you think it will be a happy marriage? That isn't a marriage. It's a merger. I would say to that lady, my dear Mrs. whatever her name is, do to extraordinary. Fraction, what's a five-letter word for disaster? Fire! Hey. Hello, Van. Well, Andy, how are you, boy? Terrible. <laughs> I haven't seen you since we worked on the old mirror together. Got a job around here? I thought you were under contract. I was, but I'm not. What happened? Oh, the usual thing. Just can't seem to stand success. <laughs> can't you lay off that stuff? No, I've learned my lesson. When I get another job, I'm through. Until the next time. Have a cigarette. Thanks. Do you know who that guy is? Nope. You don't? Why, that's Andy Bryant. Well, I've read his tough heart fella. Just say he is. I wonder what he's doing so far from Broadway. I'm afraid this paper can't pay your salary, Andy. My salary depends on how badly I need work. Well, I'll let you talk to the big boss. No. No, Roger. No. Hello, Van. Is Dad in? Yes, he is, but he's busy. Who's with him? Miss Corbin. Oh, Miss Ward, uh, this is Andy Bryant. Bryant? Not the notorious Andy that writes blabbing about Broadway. Love at first sight. Now, ain't that just too sweet for anything? He works fast. Well, uh, he's not so slow either. Half page four. Okay, Van. What's going on in old Ward's office? Tragedy, I'm afraid. The old man has Doris Corbin inside. Oh, I'm sorry for her. I worked a good many years for her father. He was a fine man. Yeah, a great old guy, but the world goes on even when we're dead. So this is why I sent for you. To buy you out. You mean to drive me out? You've hired all my best men away from me. Van Avery, Praskins, Newton. It isn't fair. It's business competition. It's underhanded just the same. You couldn't have done this to my father. He'd have known how to deal with you. Now, you must be reasonable, Miss Corbin. I want to help you. Help me? You're bound to lose the dispatch sooner or later. And I want to see you get something out of it. Now, here's my proposition. I have induced the stockholders of the Herald to allow me to make you a very generous offer. 
$20,000. Why, you offered me 50000 six months ago. I know, but times have changed. Money's tight. Now, that's my offer. Take it or leave it. My back's to the wall. I've no alternative but to accept your offer. Sir. You're doing the only sensible thing. I'm a failure, a quitter. But if I thought I had a fighting chance... But you haven't. I'll have my attorney draw up that agreement, and I'll be over to your office with it later in the day. And she said to him... <laughs> I, <laughs> I think that's, that's a good one, and that's, that's the honest truth. <laughs> Who is she? Her name's Doris Corbin. She looked as though she were coming from a funeral. Perhaps she was. But then a woman has no business trying to run a newspaper. Well, nice boy, are you going to take me to lunch? Sure. I'll come over to your house. You have lunch with me, huh? <laughs> Silly. <laughs> Joe. Yes, Mr. Make me out a check payable to Doris Corbin for $20,000. Yes, sir. I want it now. Well, Van, it's all over. I've bought the dispatch. The pioneer newspaper of this city ceases today. I want a story on it. Give me your best man. Oh, Preskin. Yeah, you'll do. Now make this big. I want a review of the history and progress of the Herald. You might mention me. My untiring efforts. My desire to give this city the best, regardless of money or expense. My generosity in purchasing the old dispatch at a price far above... Well, you might say that the dispatch never meant anything to the progress of the city. Like old man Corbin, it was dead anyhow. Worded discreetly, of course. But the Herald, under my guiding hand, will go on and on. Bigger and better than ever. You understand? I'd rather be excused. Why? Well, I worked for the dispatch for 20 years. But I still have a feeling for the old paper. Then why did you leave the dispatch and come over here? Well, I've had to do a good many things in this game that I didn't like to do. But just this once, I'm going to keep my self-respect. You'll write that story or you're through. I know the kind of a story you want and I won't write it. I can't stick a knife in a dead man. I'll write that story myself, and I want it in the late edition. Yes, Mr. Boyd. Jerry! Hello, Dad. I'm sorry I can't take you to lunch today, oh, dear, but I telephoned Jim Delane. But I already have a luncheon date. Who is this young man? Andy Bryant, meet my father. How'd you do, sir? Oh. Oh, you need someone like him on your paper. He put some pep into it. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. Be with you in a moment, Jimmy. I'll run along and give you two a chance to talk. We can make that luncheon date some other time. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye. Hello. Well, who is he? Now, don't start that, Jimmy. Come on. Where did you meet my daughter? Here, today. You seem to have become quite intimate on such short acquaintance. Your daughter's very attractive. What's your business here? I want a job. Well, you had a big job on the tabloid. How did you lose it? Well, I'll tell you. I, uh, 
I went out on a bust. Got plastered and landed here. Is that a habit of yours? Getting drunk? Hey, now, wait a minute. A man like you are a menace to decent newspaper business. You live on scandal. You thrive on the misfortunes of other people. If a paper can't make money any other way, it hires a man like you and resorts to the lowest form of journalism, exposure. Just because I ask you for a job, I don't have to take that. You're the type that would put your own mother on the front page if it would pay you money enough to keep you in booze. If you weren't an old man, I'd ram that statement right down your throat. Well, I couldn't get together with the old buzzard. Sorry, Andy. So long. It's too bad. Get a wife and kids. It's going to be tough on them. Is there anything I can do for you, Mr. Bryant? Yeah. You might lend me a couple of bucks. <laughs> I'll split the bankroll. Thanks, pal. Okay. Anybody around? Where's the bus? She's back there in the press room with the crew. What you want? I want a job. There ain't no jobs. Everybody's back there getting fired. Just think, we ain't missed an edition in 50 years. And tomorrow, there won't be no dispatch. I had to get out of there or I'd have busted out balling. Them old rollers are starting for the last time. Tell Miss Corbin I'd like to see her, would you? What's your name? Brian. Say, you ain't Andy Bryant. Sure you are. I seen your pictures on your column. Say, big feller, you're great. My name's Inky. I'll tell Miss Corbin you're here, sure. You wanted to see me? Yes. I'm Andy Bryan. If I might have a few moments. Of course. You say this guy is Andy Bryan? Yeah. And he's looking for a job here? Yeah. You're screwy. Yeah. I am not. Isn't there any way you can carry on? Too late. <laughs> you don't look like a quitter. I gave Mr. Ward my word. Then you didn't sign anything? Not yet. Oh, say, give me a chance, will you? I'd like to show you how to run the city daily. I've got ideas. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bryant, but it's impossible. Would your father have let old Ward run the pioneer paper of this city out of business? No, but... Why, of course he wouldn't. I'll bet he was a fighter. Be like him. Don't let that old pirate cheat you out of all this. Why are you so anxious to help me? Because I've got a score of my own to settle with Mr. Ward. I've put dead ones on the map before and I can repeat for you. How can you sell a front page like that? This is an age of hurry. We live too fast to read that junk. Tell a story in one word and make it scream so that anyone that sees it will have to buy it. And tell the truth no matter whom it hurts. But I couldn't pay you. 
Did I say anything about salary? If we don't make money, I don't get anything. All I want is to see old man Ward squirm. Oh, come on. So say yes. Won't you, lady? All right. If you gamble, so will I. How can we lose? We can't. Okay, lady. Now I'm hired. Show me my desk. Come on. Hey, you guys, come on in here. The dispatch is going to continue. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and this is Mr. Bryant, your new city editor. Great, Mr. Bryant. Mr. Bryant is very happy. Hey, you guys, get away. Get in there, will you? Get in there. Come on, Mr. Bryant, I'll show you your new desk. Now, listen. Gee, you're a great big feller. You made a lot of people happy. Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, if Inky likes you, you'll get along all right. Think so? Oh, boy. Why, what are they doing? I have brought your check and the agreement for you to sign. I'm not going to sell. But you've sold. I didn't sign anything. You can't do this. Why, well, the Herald is on the street already with the announcement. Now, isn't that just too bad? Now, you keep out of this. This is none of your business. Oh, but it is. Mr. Bryant is my new city editor. <laughs> you know, you shouldn't publish a story like that until you've got the paper signed and the deal in the bag. When your father gave his word, he kept it. Yeah, but father didn't take advantage of people who couldn't defend themselves. My, my. The people of this city are going to have a laugh on you when our final edition comes out tonight. I see. You're depending on this man. You know how he lost his last job? By getting drunk and walking out on his paper. What he said is true. But listen. And if you trust him, he'll do the same thing with you. As long as I work for you, I'll never take another drink. I promise. Andy, get out the final. You're a fool. I'm depending on you now. Okay, Doris. <laughs> Pinky! Say, do you know a long skinny guy over to the Herald office always wears a carnation in his buttonhole? Yeah, that's Nosy Newton. Get him on the phone for me. Okay, big fella. Give me Nosy. Hello, Nosy. Just a minute. Here's your party, big feller. Okay, give me that. Hello, Nosy. Yeah, this is Andy Bryant. Say, come on over to the dispatch office and I'll pay you that two bucks I owe you. Have I got a job? Oh, oh boy, I'm sitting pretty. Yeah. Say, how'd you like to work on a real newspaper again, huh? Sure. Come on over. And tell Praskins to go home and take his wife some flowers and the kiddies some toys. Yeah, it's on me. And tell Praskins he's got a job. Okay. Hello? Yeah? Yeah, all right. It's pretty near deadline, big fella. Oh, yeah? Give me that. Copy. I'm positive? Yeah. Throw your front page in the hell box. You got a new one coming. Give me a screamer, full page across. Your biggest heavy-faced type. 
And this is the way I want you to lay it out. Yeah. Why didn't you get that Broadway department store account? Uh, they said they would stick with the Herald for a while. You show them your circulation figures? Uh, well, uh, no. Well, do it. Get that account, even if you have to cut the Herald rates. Uh, but that isn't ethical. You heard me. Yes, sir. Oh. Hey, big feller. Trouble coming. Say, listen. Call me back in ten minutes, will you? What do you mean by printing a story like this? True, isn't it? No, it isn't. Sue the paper. I'll give you all the publicity you want. Copies of those bail bonds signed in your own handwriting. This story implies that I'm a crook. Mm, it doesn't state so definitely. I know the libel laws. What's that? No, Jerry, no. Mm -mm. Oh, no, Jerry. Not too tired. Too busy. Uh-huh. Okay, some other time, Jerry. So long. You were saying, Mr. Delane? You're just about at the end of your rope in this town, Mr. Bryant. Oh, yeah? Well, don't forget, there are two ends to every rope. What's that, a raid? Where? When? Ah, oh, it ain't come off yet. Oh, well, you are. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Hasty. Now, keep your shirt on. Now, listen to me. Don't do anything about that raid till you hear from me. I got a check with Andy. Right. Andy, I got a tip. Yeah. They're going to raid the airport club. When? Today. I just got it from Cassidy. Well, why in the daytime? There's no news in that. The bar will be closed. The wheels won't be running. There'll be nobody there. That's what I told that big flatfoot Cassidy. Say, listen. Get Cassidy to hold off till midnight. Have a camera there, and promise him you'll have his picture on the front page with all the high hats he can get together in front of the patrol wagon. <laughs> That'll be great. Cassidy will go for that in a big way. His mug in the paper with all the best people in town? I'll call. Fine. Your circulation has dropped 20% in three months. And your advertising has fallen off more than that. Well, uh, it's business condition. But we don't want alibis. We want dividends. This fellow Bryant has got you on the run. Are you telling me how to run my business? It's our business, too. Our bank has a lot of money tied up in this plant. You're not young any longer, John. You ought to take it easy. Why don't you step down and give someone else a chance? Who? This fellow Bryant. Get him away from the dispatch. Turn this paper that I've built up from nothing over to a crazy fool like that? Do you think I'm insane? No, John. No. That's final. I'm sorry you can't see things our way, John. We've got to protect our money. Man. Why, of course we can. Sure, I'll take you. I'll report to work tomorrow. Thanks. Thanks to you, too. Darling, you've got a heart as big as a house. You take in stray cats, dogs, ink slingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't make when I took you in. 
Oh, you're right. I'm good. Didn't I tell you I was? Don't remind me of it so often. Well... And if it's a raise you're after, you're not going to get it. <laughs> anyway, your dream's coming true. The paper's a success, and what's more, we've got old Ward worried. Thanks to you. Lady, I'd like to make a speech. Don't tell me you're going to be serious. Just for a moment, strange as it may seem. Now, Doris, I've been thinking for a long while how I was going to tell you this. And now that I do come to tell you, I guess I'm just like any other Moonstruck lover. Won't you make it easy for me? I want to marry you. Andy, I wish I hadn't let you go on. You mean you don't care? I care too much to ever have things go wrong. Oh, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've got a lot of faults. But women have never been one of them. I wasn't thinking about women. You were thinking about what Ward said to you six months ago. About my drinking. I made you a promise then that I'd never take a drink as long as I worked for you. I've done my best to show you I can keep my word. Anyway, you can't blame a guy for trying. Hello? For you, Andy. Thanks. Hello? Yeah? The bank? Well, what's it about? You can't tell me. Okay. I'll be right over, Mr. Foster. I suppose they want an editorial on... Don't hide your money in socks and tin boxes. Let us hide it for you. <laughs> well, Doris. Just forget what I said, will you? No, Andy. I'll always remember. Did you get the job? I did. You know what to do. It's a dirty trick to plan, Andy. But I need the money. Here's half of what we agreed to pay you. You better go now. It wouldn't do for anyone to see you here. Right. We'll start you at 10,000 a year. Give you a five-year contract increasing to 20,000. And what about Ward? Don't worry, my boy. We'll handle him. He has to do as we say. Sorry, gentlemen. I can't accept. Why not? It's like hitting a man below the belt. Kicking him when he's down. There's nothing better I'd like than to beat Ward in a fair fight. But I won't do it this way. You've already beaten him. I'll be old myself someday. That's just it. John Ward's old. We want you. Besides, I have certain obligations to my employer. She helped me when I needed it. Thank you, gentlemen. Good day. The young idiot. I'm afraid we're the idiots. Hello there. Oh, hello. Say, you're harder to get on the phone than an angel. When I do get you, you always cut me off. What's the matter, Andy? Look like you've got the blues. I have. In a way, that is. You know it's good for that, don't you? What? Some other girl. And how about that luncheon date we made six months ago? You should be happy, but you're not. What's the matter? You're in love. That's it, isn't it? Is it dark? 
Then why don't you marry the girl? She won't have me. Well, then maybe there's a chance for me. Andy, take me to the airport club tonight. We're entitled to some happiness, even if we can't have everything. No. Gee, I've got to get the paper out of it. Oh, yes, of course. I forgot. And I should warn you. Keep away from the airport club tonight. Why? Something coming off there. Really? How thrilling. I'll be sure to go to the airport club tonight. What do you mean by taking my daughter to such a place? Why make such a fuss about it, Father? Well, it's disgraceful. Well, you insist upon my going places with Jimmy, so you've no one to blame but yourself. Anyway, the best people in town were there. Why, that'll be a joke to them. Nobody takes raids of this sort seriously anymore. I do. Yes, Father, you would. Anyway, I've got a headache. I hate rows, and I'm fed up with the whole business. I'm going. But I haven't heard any explanation out of you. You won't like the answer to that. It isn't the first time Jerry's been to a roadhouse. She spent yesterday afternoon at a notorious place out on the Turnpike Highway. She told me about it and gloried in it. And who do you think was with her? The man who put her name and mine on the front page of that paper, Andy Bryant. Send Van in here. Yeah? Okay. I think Van has to be Hey, good luck, Charlie. I'll run it. Hey, Inky. Well, what's on your mind? I was just thinking of those good old days when you and I were on the ledger together. Gee, didn't we have some good times? <laughs> we sure did. Say, do you remember the old Hofbrau with that long bar? <laughs> do I? Those were the days when we used to get together and swap lies, huh? <laughs> and do you remember Billy, the bartender, that used to get out that ten-year-old bourbon for us? Yeah, sure do. Don't suppose there's any of that bourbon left in the world, huh? Yes, there is. When I was leaving town, Billy gave me a case of that bourbon, and I still have a couple of bottles left. There it is. The same old bourbon. The same old aroma, and it goes down the hatch in the same easy way. Right. Try it. No, no thanks, sir. Uh, I guess I won't. Okay. I'll leave it right here, in case you might change your mind. Matter, big fella. What's eating you? Nothing. Why? I don't know. You look kind of funny. Oh, I'm all right. Miss Corbin gone home yet? No, well, she's still in. She's working late tonight. Thanks. Happy. Andy. Yeah. I've just seen some of the Herald boys. There's a rumor that you're going over there to take charge over Ward. Isn't true. Anyway, Ward's fight for his life. He's out to get you. They won't stop at anything. I know. Yes, but you don't know this. Elaine is talking. He's got some sort of an idea that Jerry Ward is stuck on you. Oh, he's crazy. Maybe so, but look out for him. Well, listen, I'm not afraid of Elaine.
Andy, have I got a load of dirt. Oh, yeah? You know that honky-tonk we've been trying to close down at Main Street? Well? Well, the cops picked up a bunch of kids in the joint. There was a fight over a dame, and a young lad named Carson got stabbed. He may kick off. Uh -huh. Not the banker's boy. Yep. They lugged him off to the receiving hospital. But wait till I tell you who the dame was. Old Foster's daughter, Eileen. You know, the one the society page of the Herald's been playing up. Sub-dead, junior league and everything. Boy, oh boy, what a yarn. Did you get a picture? Picture? Don't be sill, I got the girl. Grabbed her right off and under the cop's nose while I were looking all over for her. Where did you find her? In the ladies' room. I pushed her through a window and oozed her into a taxi and brought her here. She's in there. Great stuff, boy. Now, I want a big yarn out of this. Listen. Yeah. Flaming youth exposed. Please, Miss Corbett. I could never go home to my father. And it would kill my mother if it got out. But why did you ever go to such a place? We had something to drink at dinner. Where? At the Turnpike Roadhouse. Harry Carlson had too much. I, I tried to stop him and we had a quarrel. I love him and, and he said he was going to that place. I went in after him to try and get him to come out. And then... And then... Oh, <laughs> oh you poor child. Write your story. Okay. The photographer will be here in a minute, Miss Foster. We want a picture. Oh, please, please. Andy, we're not going to use this story. But it's news. Nevertheless, we're not going to print it. Why not? I'm not going to have this young girl's life ruined because of one foolish mistake. But Doris. She loves that boy. Don't you understand? Are you ready, Andy? Uh, no. No, ne ne uh, never mind, that's okay. Supposing young Carlson dies. See what you can find out. Hello? You know the receiving hospital? Hello? Yeah, Andy Bryant to the dispatch. I want the dope on young Carlson that was brought in tonight. Yeah. What's that? They've just operated on him. Okay, thanks. Young Carlson will pull through all right. Oh, there you are. Hello? Get nosy for me. I'll never go to a place like that again. Never. Hello, nosy. Kill that story. I said kill it and come in here. I don't know how I can thank you. Nosy. You're sure nobody saw you get Miss Foster out of that place? Why, sure, I'm sure. Okay. You forget everything that's happened. Get me? Oh, quit me, Andy. Take the young lady home in a taxi. How about a buck for taxi fare? Well, you see what we nearly did? I wonder how many terrible tragedies papers like ours have brought upon innocent people. Publicity, ridicule. They can be dreadful things when misdirected. People want news, I give it to them. That isn't honest journalism. We're making money, achieving what we think is success by peeking through keyholes, closing scandal and filth. It isn't decent. Can't you see that? What is it, Andy? I want to quit. Quit? Yeah. I've been here long enough. Time I was moving on. You mean you, you want to leave me? That's it. On account of 
what just happened? Oh, it's nothing in particular. I'm just restless, fed up, tired of the job. It's time I was going. But, but where will you go? What will you do? I had a wire from New York. The paper's okay now. Faskins can handle the desk. He deserved that job for a long time. You ought to give it to him. You see, Maxie can't get along without me. He knows I always come back. A little weak in the knees, maybe, but I do come back. You see, he understands my weakness. So that's it. You can't stand it any longer. You're going to give in. That's it. I want a release from the promise I made you. Oh, Andy. I don't want you to go away. If you'll stay, I'll marry you. I won't make a bargain I can't keep. Don't you see I'm thinking of your future, your happiness? Don't you understand that I'm afraid sometime, well, I'd give in to that weakness we were just talking about. Oh, don't you see, it's hopeless. When do you want to go? Now. There's a train leaving for the east at midnight. All right, Andy. I'll make out your check. I'll go in and say so long to the boys. Hey, boys. Come here, man. Pinky. I'm leaving. Well, where are you going? Back to New York. I want you boys to carry on just the same as if I was here. You get the death, Braskins. It's your chance, old man. You're not running away, are you? I mean, on account of uh, Delane and Ward. Well, what do you think? Well, I wouldn't blame you if you did. So long, old man. You've been a great guy, Andy. I'm sorry. Thanks. You've been a great little boss. Well, I, I guess there isn't anything else. Andy, if you're going to stay in this newspaper business, I, I wish you'd stop and think sometimes that sooner or later you get back from this world just what you give up. That's one reason I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye, my dear. Hello, Mr. Blaine. Hello. Could I speak to you a minute? Yes, yeah, surely. Send over four, Jack. So 
okay, Mr. Delane. We got him. You sure? Sure. He won't get out of the hospital for a month. Go and get Paskins and don't tell anybody else. Understand? Hurry. Why, Andy, what happened? You were right, Paskins. One of them got me. I don't know whether it was Ward or Delane. I'll get Cassidy. No, don't do that. I don't want the police mixed up in this. I'll settle my affairs in my own way. Inky, don't mention this to anybody, not even Miss Corbin, understand? Okay, big fella, but where are you going? You thought I was yellow, didn't you? Thought I was running away. Well, I'll show you. See if there's anybody outside. Keep your mouth shut and hold the deadline on the final edition till you hear from me. Okay. You're gonna let him go like that? Oh, shut up. He knows what he's doing. Go and get nosy. Andy. Listen, Jerry, you like me a little, don't you? Don't you know, Andy? I know it's late, but, well, I've got to see you. It's important. No, I can't tell you over the telephone. Well, then, come on over. Say, honey, is your father there? Oh, I'll be all alone. Dad isn't here. He never gets home before midnight. Okay. I'll be right over. I'll be waiting for you, Andy. But Delane had Andy Slaughter. If they get together, anything can happen. Locate Delane. Stay right on his tail and keep in touch with me on the wire. Okay. I don't know. You tell me what happened. Well, the big fella... You tell me. Well? Well, what's happened, Andy? Pretty, isn't it? Somebody had me slugged. Who? That's what I come here to find out. Your father tried to get me every other way. Now this. You're wrong, Brad. I did try to get you, but I never resort to violence. I don't have to kill a man to get him out of my way. Did you bring Dean on from New York? Yes. I thought so. That was your way to try to get rid of me. But it didn't work out just as you expected. I didn't get drunk and walk out as you said I would. I quit before that happened. I've given up my job, the woman I love, everything I had except my self-respect. And I've still got that. If you didn't do this, who did? Delane. Yes. And before I shake the dust of this berg off my feet, I'm going to settle with Mr. Delane. Andy, wait. Now, my dear. If you're going to Delane, I'm going with you. You can't get in a steam at midnight, but I can. I'll help you. No, Jerry. I forbid you. You forbid me for the last time. Stay there, apartments. Make it snappy. I told I could have stopped him. Now, don't you worry. He won't do anything to an old man like war. It's Delane I'm worried about. Where is Delane now? Well, I've got nosy spotting him. 
He just called in. Delane's inside his apartment and knows he's hanging around watching outside. I'm going to Delane. Who's there? It's Jerry. Hello, Jerry. Couldn't do your own dirty work, could you? You had to get three other guys to do it for you. Well, that's nothing to what I'm going to do to you. <laughs> Come on, get up. Yes, but... Uh... Come on. Lucy! Well, you better get somebody. Come on, get up. Receiving hospital, quick. Central, 8641. Receiving hospital? Send an ambulance at once. Bel Air Apartments. Jerry! Dad, Andy's not to blame. Main, two, three, four, five. City desk. Plaskins? Well, here's your story. Ward's daughter shot. Yeah, just before midnight. Delane's apartment. Hello, Brian speaking. Plaskins, there's no story for the dispatch. No. I told you no once, and I meant it. No! City desk. What? I'm gonna wait for Mr. Ward to come in to decide on that. Andy, I got an exclusive yarn. Yeah? Accidental death exposes double life of prominent man. Supposed loving husband and father at Jekyll and Hyde. How do you like that? Now listen, I've been telling you for the last year that this paper doesn't cope with that kind of stuff. Kill it. Well, I thought maybe you'd change your mind. Yeah. What? Who? Where? No. No. Yes. Sure, yes. I'll be right over. Oh, hey, wait a hey, what's the matter? Must be something mighty big. Let's go. Hey, Jim. Get your camera and we'll meet you outside. Okay. What is it? What's happened? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Well, 
First edition, fellas. An eight pound boy. Well, hey, fellas. Yes, he's a little fellow, right? Well, congratulations. There's a little fellow. Well, congratulations. Well, that's, well, that's, well, that's great. Shh. Andy, how about a picture? Sure, okay. Come on, Johnny. 